Live from Peabody Place in downtown Memphis. This is News Channel 3, live at 9, with Alex Coleman and Mary Beth Conley. And welcome back, everybody. Our next guest is a former drug dealer and gang member, but Ronald Baldridge's life changed when he was shot in the spine during a robbery more than 22 years ago. And who would have guessed that the white police officer who rode with him to the hospital that night would become his best friend, and to this day, they work like brothers together to keep other kids from making the same mistakes as Ronald. Well, now his story is being told in the new movie, Five Shots, and it written by Wasabi Jones, who is with us this morning. Screenwriter, actor, uh, co-executive producer. They do it How all. Many do it all. Do exactly. How many times do Many times, many times. Exactly. Ronald, let's many start times. with you, Ed. Was this a story you felt, as many years as Mary Beth and I have known you, that eventually had to be told to even more people than already know about it? Yes, in fact, I was, uh, I was blessed in the sense that they came to me with the idea that uh, they would want to do a movie about me. Uh, hopefully, uh, young people will look at this movie and, and watch and see that uh, they can use my life as an example of what not to do. Mm -hmm. um, to make better choices, to understand the consequences to the choices that they make in life, and um, hopefully be successful in life, too. And how important is the relationship that you share to this day with Lieutenant Steve Grisham in teaching those kids that we have to look beyond color? Because you fully admit when you were 20, you know, running the streets, making $1,000 in three hours illegally, you hated two kinds of people, white people and police officers. Exactly. So how important is it for kids to see a white man and a black man on the same mission to save it's very important. In this day and time, I think Memphis can be the catalyst uh, to the nation in the sense of uh, that we could change the way race relations uh, take place. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and use my life as an example. I mean, if you're talking about opposite sides of the track, a cop and a gangbanger ex exist opposite sides of the track. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we try to teach our young people that are uh, talking, Steve and I, we try to teach that color shouldn't matter. And... Um, what the city of Memphis could really look like if people would get outside their boundaries and learn to reach out to each other mm -hmm. and stop looking at color and just look at the individual and what the outcome can be, you know, to be able to change a life. Right. Sabi, what about you? As a filmmaker, as an actor, you know, you've seen it all. What was it about this project that really just kind of grabbed you to say, this is kind of different here, something's kind of special about this? The thing that really got me most about Ron's story was the fact that he kept going after he was shot. At this point, most individuals give up. Mm -hmm. But um, this relationship that he developed with Steve, Steve um, reached out to Ronald, not just within law enforcement, but in his own personal life, mm -hmm. and helped Ronald to understand that life is so much more than the lifestyle living within the gangs and selling drugs and getting involved in that lifestyle. And we approached Ron and was like, this would make a, an excellent story to tell Ron. And I think that a lot of people would really need to see this, not only from the standpoint that um, from where you came from and where you went in terms of, where, uh, in terms of the gang lifestyle, but how someone in law enforcement reached in to, pull, to help get you out of it. Mm -hmm. And what you did with your life and going out on the streets and getting young people, bringing them home, being a mentor to them mm -hmm. and, and helping them get their futures in order. Right. We're looking We're at some clips right here. Do you see this movie or as you put it together here, is it a story of reality? Is it also though a story of hope? How do you hope, yeah, how do you envision it being perceived? This story, um, taking it from Ron's childhood and showing how most of the, the young people that get involved in this lifestyle come from impoverished mm -hmm. single parent homes and how you have a parent who is working very hard trying to take care of their children working two jobs uh, living uh, mostly in either substandard housing or living in uh, 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 small places or in, in really bad neighborhoods trying to raise children how difficult it is and how these influences are so easy to get to our kids and Ron coming up in this lifestyle 
and seeing all the nice things that he's seen, both in, in treachery, in the lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, how law enforcement will eventually catch up to you involved in it, uh, and how he, how this, this, um, how he was shot, and uh, having gone through uh, with uh, paralysis and having to adjust to a lifestyle in a wheelchair, it's just so, so amazing to me that he did not give up. And his mother, Erlene, didn't give up on him either. And she helped him and, and kept him going. And then Steve got involved. And now Ron is going and helping others just like he was helped. It's amazing. And, and the, the reasons why you got involved in the wrong lifestyle are not bad reasons. You wanted to help your mom because she was working night and day. And you grew up with very good values. You just turned from them because you wanted her to have a better life. Is exactly. that an accurate right. portrayal? Do you see that in a lot of kids today who make the wrong choices? Is that why they're doing it? I see that in a lot of children today. As a matter of fact, I see that in too many. Uh, with the element of, there are also the element out there that there, there are individuals out there willing to take advantage of those young people out there. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter uh, who they are, a drug dealer, gang banger, or someone that can man manipulate them into robbing or taking or stealing. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're out there, and young people need to know that they're out there and need to be able to recognize who they are and what they are. And what their real motives right. are. Right. This is such an inspirational story. Tell me, what's the next step here? Can other folks kind of participate in it? I mean, what are you people, what are you folks looking for right now in trying to get this off the ground? Oh, right Where now, does it stand? Right now, we are um, looking to get investors to get involved in the project. Uh, we're really seeking individuals here in Memphis to keep this a Memphis-born uh, project so that uh, we can help start with our community first. And as we become a template for this, uh, for, for change and getting kids outside of the lifestyle that we can spread out to other places as well. And the organization Piano, which exactly. Ronald started, Piano is also Inc. looking for mentors. Exactly. And you're going to have a march on Monday starting at the Martin Luther King Labor Center, right? Yes. At 8 a.m. 8 a.m. And Memphis you want Carrots. folks who can be mentors to these children who, who don't have a strong adult presence. Come out. Or don't have enough of a strong adult yes, presence. Yes, come out. Home. All right. Well, there's the there's information the right there. Enjoy. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Best thank of luck you very with the project. Much. And it's a great story. Thank it really you. Is. Thank you very Appreciate much for you. having us. Thank you. Good to meet you. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Give Steve our best. I will. Ready for some music?